So, you know, once again, when it comes to uh, Mickey's music, like all great artists, he can move between the genres. And um, as, as the great musician knows, that is important for your catalog, especially as a whole, when you look at your catalog as a whole. It makes me think of great bands, you know, once again, like the Pumpkins and like Led Zeppelin, you know, who weren't afraid to cross all sorts of musical boundaries and territories um, with every different release. Every release was different, you know. It's martyristic and a true quality that shows the, uh, the high level of respect to the listeners and to the fans and to the people who pay the money, you know, because... We love that. We love watching artists grow. And, you know, I love watching Mickey grow as an artist too because it just gets better. Better and better and better. So I love that, like, with every new release, like, with every video they they put up, how, how they just switch it up. You know, it's just, uh, wow. It's just, that's just one, that's just one of the many great qualities behind, um, behind Mickey and behind all of their efforts as a whole that I can really respect and get behind and get into and it's a it's nice pump it's a nice kind of pump up feeling because you know like when Mickey was playing um wear me out at the show you know at bar fly it was a heavier version of wear me out than I heard before and then listening to wear me out on the CD is like you know an in between of those two and you know it's just one of those things you know um it's just like lonely lonely mess for example when he played that at the show when when he started when he broke into lonely mess at the show I, I'm pretty sure it's called lonely mess that's um probably my favorite favorite song that he's done um when he kicked into that at the show I was not expecting it and from listening to Lonely Mess um, in on the in the in the live video on the She Died page, th that version is is a heavy rocker, but it's it seemed more docile, like more um, not like heavy, 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 just that really good in between. And then when when he broke out into Lonely Mess at Bar Fly, he played it with so much. Um, energy and it was really really heavy and it was it was like veracity you know and that hit me and I couldn't help but but start dance like dancing in the same spot I couldn't help but sing along it was almost like the song evolved to a higher state of consciousness and I love that song and that that song just blew me away and I'm, I'm really happy I bootlegged that show because I just been listening to that uh, for the past couple of days, and that is just wow, wow! I I love that song. I love that song. I love a lot of uh, many, many different songs, you know. But I had like that one stuck in my head. I had parachute stuck in my head. Swamp invasion was stuck in my head. Um, excited was stuck in my head, and oh, redhead, redhead was also stuck in my head. You know, there's a part where he goes like, where he really goes into it during the chorus, where he's like slamming his foot down on that pedal, and he's like rocking it down, like slam cording that guitar man and let me tell you like wow he really pounds out an amazing chorus on that song so yeah i just i just love how their music is progressive and it just feels different every time you hear it and that's great going going back to redhead 2 again is that during that chorus when he's when he's pounding it out you know um he's hammering that guitar and he's like stomping on that drum pedal on i guess it's the i think it's the tom he's stomping on that too and he's screaming you know and it like the amp sound mixed with the vocal sound mixed with being there like the vocal coming from mickey plus the vocal coming through mickey's mic through the amplifier and through everything it hits you right in the chest like it really fucking hits you and it's very vibrant you know it really gets gets you in, into in, in it moves you when you see it live especially when you see it live like wow like wow when i saw that live i was i was blown away um especially like lonely mess too you know um i just love that song to death and to hear him rock out on that you know i was just singing along the whole time through you know it's a very good sing along
I'm pretty sure other people were singing along too. And it was just, um, that one just really gets the crowd going, man. That one just really, you know, kicks everybody in the teeth. That was just a really, really, really great, really great moment. I was so happy to hear that because it's, like I said, my favorite song of his. Um, and, you know, just going back to, like, that redhead, that takes a, a lot of concentration. You know, he didn't miss a beat. He hit the tom. Well, I guess with, I guess it was one foot pedal for the tom. I don't know if that was hooked up to the cymbal, like the, the crash cymbal. But, you know, to, to get the tom sound, the, the cymbal, the crash cymbal sound, um, the guitar playing the chords at the same time, and, you know, screaming and keeping it all in check and all in one shot. And you could tell every time he did it on that course, everybody just like was flipping, you know, everybody was just like, yeah, it's, it's a really awesome, awesome feat at the same time as well, because that's like Mickey's that I, I guess if I had to compare it during that chorus on Redhead, Mickey's playing um, at three beats per second, maybe four beats per second, but let's just say three, three beats per second, right? Um, but that's the equivalent to he's got the vocal or I guess the vocal you can keep it as one right the vocal you can keep it as one but you got the crash and the cymbal so that's two you got the bass drum like tom that's three um, and you got the guitar is four well just excluding excluding the vocal aspect that three beats a second is the equivalent to 12 beats a second. 12 beats a second because he's doing all these different things at the same time. And the impact that that had, not only as, um, not only on, I should say, the every individual person at the show, but the show as a whole, like the venue as a whole, that impact is, that impact is pretty amazing. And when it came through, every time he did it, I just wanted to scream because it was just so awesome. Um, you don't have to take my word for it. Go back and watch the uh, moon coverage. Um, he plays it in there. So go back and watch that. I think it's either in video two or video three. Actually, it might be in, in video four. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. I, I, I'm having a little bit of a brain fog. But um, yeah, just go back and check it. The whole thing, you'll be amazed. And that actually reminds me a lot that 12 beats a second, it kind of reminds me a lot of Achilles' Last Stand by Led Zeppelin when John Bonham, um, that breakaway point near the beginning of the song where he hits the drums 12 beats, you know, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. it's just, it's just, it's just amazing. It's phenomenal. It really is. It's just something you got to see to believe. So really go check that out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm amped up right now just talking about it, you know, I guess from the beginning of the video, you know, I, I was kind of like slow going into it. And now I'm just amped up. This was supposed to be one video, but I think it's going to be three or four. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm ready to go right now, man. I'm ready to like, I'm, I'm probably going to blast this for the neighbors later. Blast, blast this CD for the neighbors later, man. Maybe we'll have a block party. You never know. You never know. But um, yeah, that's just, it's just really cool. So I can't wait to share these clips I got with you. Um, these Mickey Moon clips from the Rattla LP. So we should get back into the review because um, I'm rambling on a bit and uh, like I said it was supposed to be one video um, and now it's gonna be four we're gonna have to put schoolboy on for tomorrow instead and let me tell you you don't want to miss that because that was really 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 cool um, so I can't wait to get to schoolboy but we'll tease you uh, a little bit longer you know we'll bring schoolboy out tomorrow um, yeah and then we're gonna do the uh, Cobra for Friday. I gotta get Cobra done. I gotta get it done tomorrow, man. So either either way, something's gonna be done tomorrow for Cobra. So we'll post Schoolboy tomorrow while I'm while I'm working on Cobra because I gotta finish up uh, some some of the stuff for uh, the Schoolboy topic for tomorrow. Um, and Matthew Marsden, he was just really 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 cool, and you know much respect to this guy. This guy is awesome. And uh, to get the inside for information for him to give it to uh, to me, that was really really cool. So I can't wait to to share that um, with all of you because um, I know you're all fans, as as I am. 
So if we could get all that done um, by Friday, that would be great. Because uh, I got, I believe, seven or eight introduction topics for Rambo First Blood Part 2 that are coming soon. So that, that will probably be on on Monday, the Rambo First Blood Part 2. And then um, we got the most amazing and inspirational interview with Rafael Robledo Jr. And that that is just going to blow your socks off. This guy was just so cool um, to give us an interview. I, I love this guy. Um, go check him out on YouTube. Just type in um, Rafael Robledo Jr. Or type in Rambo head bust and you'll see him working on a, um, I think one third scale Rambo head bust. So check that out because that's, uh, wow, that's amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So, so getting back to uh, the Rattler LP, I just, I just, you know, and getting back to uh, Mickey Moon, I just love artists that can change it up while, you know, keeping it to their own sound and always original. And Mickey does that, you know. Uh, which makes it a real privilege to cover this album and to review this album. And I'm looking forward to covering more. So we're going to do a little track-by-track track analysis. I'll try to keep it short because I'm running a little long um, with a few tiny clips. I don't want to play too much because I really do want you all to go out and discover this for yourself. I really want you to go pick up the album and discover it on your own time. And, you know, it will make it that more personal to you. And it's a really great album. Like, don't get me wrong. Just take my word for it. Go pick it up. It's awesome. Um, I'll play you some of my favorite moments of the LP. So, before we get into it, uh, I just want to say, please excuse the sound quality. Like, I am dry micing this. I'm just playing it off my speakers here. So, it's not going to sound 100%. It's not going to sound like the quality on the mp3 or the or the disc so it's actually nowhere near close to a hundred percent um the lp itself sounds a million times better and it's fucking beautiful you know through headphones nice three-dimensional feel through the headphones so congrats to mickey and Jonas on that um because the recording procedure on this is just great it really shines through um you know you guys are really great at what you do and it really shows here. So, behold, Mickey Moon, the Rattler LP, clocking in at 19 minutes and 26 seconds. Do not let the size or the length of it fool you, because it will kick your fucking ass. Let's do it. 